have its own identity as opposed to Asian horror. Well, I think, again, I think what I said earlier ties into that. Um, I think it's there. I mean, we do have it. And horror is in our blood. I mean, you go back to, you know, the, the golden heyday of, of comics with a K. It wasn't just Darna, it wasn't just Captain Barbell. We had horror, and it was, you know, it was all over the place. Um, yeah, it's just, I guess we need to, as, as Budget pointed out, you know, we need to kind of tone down on the tendency to copy what's popular elsewhere um, and, and try to delineate already what the term, what the genre means to us and how we can explore it in our own unique way. And again, in the way that the Japanese did it. And, and you know, nobody else had seen that before that came out. And it basically revolutionized horror. It was one of those moments in horror history where things change. And, and it seemed overnight, but you know, it took a while. It took a while for Ringu and Juan to open up the eyes of Hollywood. But you know, for, for the majority, it, it happened very quickly. And you look at horror today, and it's not the same kind of horror you would have seen pre-Ringu. So that's what we need to do. And, and I realize that's probably a tall order, but you know, at, at least, you know, to have that goal, to set that site, hopefully, at least we know where to aim, we just, you know, we need to do it, it needs to happen. Parang wala pang distinct look. I mean, I think we, we had that back in the 80s now. But when something became popular, the tendency of the studios was, let's copy that and just put Pinoy's into the picture. So parang it never really gave us a chance to to create our own look. Um, so if you like get a Pinoy film, you put it, you have a foreigner watch it, or you get a Pinoy horror film, there may be some scenes that they'll go, oh, I've seen that in Japanese horror films, when you'd want them to say, wow, I've never seen that before. Um, and when we get to that point, I guess it's the only time we can actually say that Philippine horror has developed its own look or feel or genre. Um, what is the importance of horror in the Philippine uh, pop culture and in Philippine literature? Yes, no. <laughs> you said yes, and then you couldn't. Well, horror is also literature, and you know, it, uh, some people might uh, treat horror as something that's very shallow. But in reality, you, know, that you, you also get a lot of emotions uh, dealing with, with uh, horror, in, in the horror genre. You have uh, characterization, you also have characterization, uh, you have. Uh, Certain symbolism that uh, you know it, it may be uh, that may be uh, informative. So I, I think horror is also a, part, a big part of the Philippine literature and should not be taken lightly. Um, yeah, to semi-repeat myself, um, it, it is a, it is a good way not to talk about things that might be a little too difficult to face if you put it in a you know, the, let's say it's a film, you know, you can talk about um, child abuse or, or white slavery, and sometimes it's a little too difficult to look at if you're watching a film or, you know, if you're reading it. But if you use horror as, as your, your jumping off point and, and you, you're actually talking about, let's say, child abuse, uh, and uh, let's say a uh, specific example, uh, a swang as metaphor for child abuse, um, which I did in a short story. And there, you can do that. Though. You can, you can. On the surface, it's a horror story. It's a, it's about an aswang, uh, about the the passage of of the legacy from mother to child. But you know, beneath that, the the child abuse layer is there. So there, that that to me is the importance of horror. You know, yes, you have the thrills. You have the that momentary, you know that sort of instant where you feel it. But it's, it's the lingering stuff, it's, it's the subtext. It's the stuff that you think about after with the lights off. 
there. That, that for me, is, is what's important about horror. And, and again, as far as being Pinoys are concerned, it's um, the elements normally seen in, in horror stories are something that we live with every day and casually talk about it's 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 a given and it's not explore it's not explored as much it's not promoted as much you end up with a generation loving um, you know wizards going to Hogwarts and uh, Percy Jackson and you know kids suddenly know all about Greek mythology and believing that vampires sparkle when there's so much to discover and to know about the Philippines, and there's just um, not being spoken of, not being written enough. Um, when the funny thing is, foreigners get to read our stuff or get to know about mythologies, they're the ones who say, why isn't anyone writing about it? And we spend so much time focusing more on the foreign stuff because we think that's glossier and nicer. So horror is the way to explore that certain side of our culture and our folklore. Thank you, Sir Dan, Sir Antivera, Sir uh, Morella. Um, ladies and gentlemen, the floor is